What's up, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Game of the Week show. I'm Matt, that's Dan, and that's Ash. Gents. Look at the enthusiasm. Yeah. yeah. Are you excited for today's show? Yeah. Good. Always. Dan? Yeah, of course. When am I not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, let's get into this. We've got plenty of news to excite our viewers today. A couple of new game announcements. A couple of, you're going to be talking about Nintendo later today, which we don't do every week, but... We make an exception this week because there's some good news. There is some good news. Um, I still don't like that camera. It looks like it's tilting over. That's fine. If you have an issue with the picture, we are sorry. We fiddled around with it for about half an hour. I can't. Yeah, Matt I can't still get over it. it. So um, well, should we just, just should we just do it and hope for the let's best? Let's just leave it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the game of the week show is a very amateur weekly show that the three of us do. <laughs> Where the three of us get together every week to discuss the latest news topics in the video game industry. We also then talk about the game releases for that week before each picking our favourite game of the week. So if you like video game conversations, news, reviews, let's plays, we do all of that. You can find out everything we do on our website, thegameinitiative.com. The link to that is down below. And if you do enjoy the words that are coming out of our mouths today, don't forget to share us with your friends because we... We don't work hard, but we work for this, so, you know, new viewers are always appreciated. We're, yeah, we are, I can't remember the word, but we, we're persistent. Yeah. Yes. Never, never say no. Never yeah. give up. And so, never let you down. Dedicated. <laughs> uh, so the first topic, I like that you've got that, on the show this week is regarding a Lego game. We talked about, well, I talked about it last week, I was like, where's this Lego game? Why has it not happened yet? Yeah. And sure enough, here it is. Lego, Star Wars, The Force Awakened has been announced. So we were just talking about Marvel last week, so another Lego game coming. This one coming July 1st. Uh, the, the game's going to take place in between Le- uh, Legend, The Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. And it's going to provide additional insight into the, the Force Awakens story. It looks pretty much like any Lego game. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's not a huge amount new to say about it it's not going to be doing anything new or amazing but it's got the Star Wars branding it's going to have that same humour it's going to have a good story you're going to have Rey, Finn Han Solo Chewbacca BB-8 Kylo 10 according to my notes but Kylo Ren will be really there amongst more they'll all be there Um, apparently there's going to be one new mechanic which is a a multi-build function so rather than constructing stuff on your own hopefully we'll bring some more of a co-op feature into it Yeah. because I heard the latest Marvel game is not the best for the co-op in the Ron Longy series, which has quite often been there in the past. That uh, Ash, you've played yeah. a lot more of them than the two of us. Yeah, the um, you, the sort of couch co-op you're referring to. Then, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it is good. Um, but yeah, the the mechanics of it can sometimes be a bit confusing because the way the camera moves, if you've got two people in different parts of the map, it can become a bit distorted. But uh, the split screen. But yeah, it's still it's a nice little touch that the Lego series has done. Um, over the years, and I'm I'm super excited for this. It's uh, you know it, it looks like a very good Lego addition to the Lego franchise. Without a doubt, Dan, that with it being Star Wars, this game is going to sell incredibly well. Of course, is it not? Like when has the Star Wars branded thing not sold well? Mm. This is true, and it's just nice to see that we're getting. We know that these games aren't going to be. We've talked about licensed games in the past, and whether or not they're ever any really good. And some of them are getting better now. Obviously, we had Battlefront, but if you didn't like Battlefront, this one will be a completely different experience. Fun and light-hearted. And... It is, yeah. The humour of LEGO games. We talked about it only last week. Yeah. Um, after the Avengers one came out. And, uh, yeah, it's... It's one that I would consider purchasing. Mm. If, uh, but... There's just so many Lego games now, it's to decide which ones you want. There are a lot, and I'm amazed they actually managed to get them out as quickly as they do. <laughs> um, every sort of six months is pretty impressive. And that they still sell. Yeah. Do you reckon those people... They're, at... not, they're not short games. No. Yeah. Do you reckon the people at TT Games, I think it's TT Games, um, that build these games, do you think they're... I mean, on the one side, if you love doing making Lego, then it's the dream job, you just get to make lego games every single day yeah but at the same time you're making lego games every single day do you think they ever kind of do you reckon there'll ever be a time what i'm saying is where these games will burn out kind of the quality will drop off because uh, the passion I, isn't there and no i don't think the quality will ever diminish i mean you know lego are you know as, as a company themselves are a very very well established yeah. company now i mean they, they went through their their rough patch but you know they're a booming brand now and yeah I, I can't see it 
disappearing anytime soon. There's clearly strong demand for these games. Yeah. Even now, you know, we don't really see any sales drop off. We don't see the quality drop off. Okay, some games are better than others, but you know, I'm I'm excited oh, to play the Avengers one that's just come out. This one, which is out in uh, June, July. Uh, well, it's June in America, but I think it's going to be the first of July here. Mm. So it's yeah, I, I, you know, both of these I'm expecting. I've got you know high expectations for both of these. Yeah, the thing that helps the Lego games the most is the fact that they're not having to come up with the source material in the first place. True. So True. it's like yeah, they're having mm. to adapt it for the Lego style. Yeah, but at the end of the day, they've not come up with the actual story. <coughs> well, they probably have not the, the story. You mean the fan, the yeah. IP kind of? Yeah, thing. exactly. It's just yeah. like yeah. Jurassic Park is like that. It's it's already already done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adapters. Star Wars is already done. Harry Potter is already done. You know what yeah, you're sure. building around. Yeah, the characters yeah. are there and everything. It's just adapted screenplay really for the mm-hmm. yeah. add in humor and what have you. Yeah, yeah. No, perfect game to play if you have a kid and you want to kind of get your kids into game because it's you know it's got. It's got something that us older people can appreciate. You know, Star Wars, we're big fans of yeah. Jurassic Park. We talk about all these things, Avengers. But it's kind of, it's a game that you can play with your kid because it's co-op and it, it's Lego. So and that's yeah. great. You, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly, the, you know, this is, Lego games are the games that I play with my son. You know, he's nine, ten years old and it's a great game. All the Lego games are great games from a co-op point of view to play together. Okay. Um, they are good for that. We will move on to the second item of the day, uh, PlayStation Plus. The new games for February are now live. We talked about those, was it last week or two weeks ago? It must have been last, last week. week. Yeah. Uh, but we've already got a window into what we're going to be having in March. So the, the vote to play feature, is that yeah. a word to explain it, is returned. Yeah. Uh, we had this in, I think it was October last year. It was some point last year. It was, yeah. October, and basically what it was, was you, as the PlayStation Plus member, can vote for which game you want to have for free on your PS4 for the following month. Uh, this month we have three games to vote for again, like we did last time. Uh, we have Action Henk, which is a side-scrolling racer, but rather than being racing cars, they're kind of action heroes, mm-hmm. which is kind of a nice little twist. You've got Assault Android Cactus, which is a sci-fi twin-stick shooter. Pretty cliche there. And then you've got Broforce, Force, which is a side-scrolling shooter, 80s action, but really good name for a game. Broforce. Force. Bro Force! <laughs> which one will you be voting for, Dan? <laughs> it's either going to be Action Hank or Broforce, Force, I think, out of those two. Yeah, I don't know which one yet. I like the look of Action Hank. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Because it's like, both Force is cool, but we have enough 8 bit shooters, side scrolling yeah. shooters. Whereas, you know, a racer with action heroes is something a little bit different. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. The other two games you have, there are hundreds. Literally, we, hundreds can, we can have PlayStation Plus uh, games regularly, so. Get something a bit different in. Yeah. But yeah, not a huge much else to say about those three other than uh, make sure you cast your vote. And hopefully, this means that people can't. Well, people will still moan about the games they get. Well, I'm sure. yeah, but at least they, now you have a you can have a voice. Yeah, yeah. In what you're saying, they'll be they'll probably moaning that why can't you vote between Infamous, Killzone, and Knack or something like that. But there we go. People are never happy. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole today. No, we're not. No. We're keeping happy. Talking of happy, <laughs> super violent <laughs> game <laughs> The Culling has been announced. Uh, if anyone out there has seen Battle Royale before. Uh, this is basically Battle Royale the game and if you're not cool and you don't know what Battle Royale is maybe you've heard of The Hunger Games which is basically an American rip off even though I think it's not is it written by an American author The Hunger Games oof Mister literature know. I don't know we won't get bogged down on those details but <laughs> literature <it's>, books <laughs> I don't know what they are I struggle to read anything that's why we're gamers <laughs> uh, we don't read <laughs> <laughs> so this is a 16 player game where basically you're on a, a tropical island it's not overly tropical due to the events that are going it's on sort it's sort of last man standing Far Cry 3 sort of surroundings isn't it really yeah it's, it's a yeah. very colourful vivid island but the other 15 players in the game are all trying to kill you you can uh, craft weapons set traps push people off cliffs blow them up with dynamite cut them in half with chainsaws kill them with a bow and arrow you know whatever 
standard stuff. Pretty much whatever you want to do. Yeah. Uh, but it looks cool. I, I, it does. We, it does. We keep talking about these multiplayer games, obviously is a big part of video games now, but these ones that are kind of coming out that are a little bit different from your, your standard mm. game. And I, I like I like the idea of this one. Yeah, it, it doesn't tend to take itself too seriously, which is quite nice. And even the trailer, I think, portrays that as well. The way that the sort of commentary is overlaid, I think it's it's nice that it's it is a you know a, an online multiplayer killing sort of game, but it's not your Call of Duty. It's not your you know your normal online multiplayer. Yeah. It's not run and gun basically. Yeah. yeah. No, it looks. I mean, this is only at the moment only coming to PC. Uh, the the Steam early access for the game, which is obviously the thing that a lot of games now do, where you can basically pay for the game before it's finished, which is, I think it works out for both parties, provided they do actually follow through and finish the game. Yeah. Uh, that's the only danger you do have, but it gives them basically the money up front to help them make the game better. Um, it's coming March 18th to that. Hopefully we might see a, a console release in the future, but I wouldn't be surprised if it never does come to consoles. Yeah. It's just... You know, I mean, they'd have to rely on teaming up with, you know, maybe Sony or, or Microsoft in order to help get it into the into one of their programs. We'll see. It doesn't strike me as a very Microsoft game off, no. off the bat. I mean, we obviously have inner Xbox now, which is yeah. bringing through a lot more indies onto the system. And we do have the Xbox. No, I, I just mean the actual, su- the actual subject matter itself. Mm. It strikes me as something out of the two would probably sneak on the Sony. Oh, they're damn Japanese. More of, yeah. <laughs> more likely than... Well, Battle Royale yeah. is Japanese, so... Oh, yeah, and if you want to go back to your little run earlier, yes, The Hunger Games was written by an American. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. I just thought I'd send you on a fishing expedition. Yeah, fair enough. So, yeah, that, uh, look out for that if you have PC, uh, PC March 18th. Looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I'm considering moving to Windows soon with my laptop because... Mine is literally held together with sellotape, so it is going to be time soon. It is actually held together with sellotape. <laughs> yeah. Just, he's not joking. <laughs> At some point, we may see a puff of smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from the corner part. down here, yeah. There's going to be one episode. <laughs> where, there will be one episode one week where the audio will just go bad halfway through because we'll have to switch to the, uh, the camera audio. Or there'll be an explosion in this corner and we will all come flying towards the camera and it will not be a special effects. <laughs> well, no, obviously, because I couldn't do special effects. <laughs> Uh, moving on, we have uh, a few release date announcements mm. uh, in in addition to the cutting this week. Some good um, games as well. Some good games. We'll start yeah. with, we'll, we'll do them in kind of order of expected kind of name, hype, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll start off with Doom, which is coming May 13th. This has been long overdue, nice. multiple delays. It seems like this has been years that we've been talking about this. I know. I mean, Doom... Doom 3, I remember, was a, an early 360 game. I think maybe 2009, maybe? I don't know. don't know. But anyway, this has been a long time coming. It's software. Yes. Doom, without doubt, is one of the most important games in video game history. Absolutely. It started the shooters, mm-hmm. the first-person shooter. And the latest trailer, it does look very much like a Doom game. A lot of violence, mm-hmm. a lot of shooting, a lot of fast-paced action. Yeah. Going to pick this up on May 13th, Ash, do you think? I'm very tempted. I am very, very tempted. You know, I've been waiting for it for a long time, but I might just see what the general feeling is from the game yeah. before I dive into this one. Um, got to try and be a little bit more sensible this year with my game purchases. We'll see how that goes. Is that because you're still trying to get through last year's I've still got purchases. quite a backlog to <laughs> catch up with, uh, and so I'm going to try and be a bit more reserved this well, year. Well, I think it's, it's the sensible thing would be only buy a game when you know you're going to play it. But I like, don't buy a game and then like, okay, well, that'll go to But when I'm still in the shop, I have every intention of playing it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Dan? Were you a fan of Doom growing up? No, oh. I, I didn't grow up playing the Doom games personally, as in like I didn't own them. Played them occasionally at friends' houses, but this is one mm. that I'm probably not going to pick up. No, I'm, I'm very much... If everyone says it's really good, then I'll probably get it. But there are other first-person shooters yeah. like you that I'm more kind of interested in. It's one of those where 
I loved playing Doom on the PC when it was big back in the day, but it was. I think for its time, it was quite advanced and it was quite. It was. It was well. It was a game changer, really, back in the day. Yeah. Um, and I think I, you know, it is very nostalgic now, sort of looking back and thinking of those days playing on it. Um, you know, on a, a very very old PC. Um, but now I don't know if it would just. I don't know if it would have that. I don't know if it's it, would, a very, it would stand up to games nowadays. It's a very different game now yeah. compared to what you would have played back then. It, it's yeah. not a one of a kind anymore. There's yeah. first person shooters every that, week. I think that's the thing. I, you know, as much as I enjoyed it back in the day, I'm not sure I'd quite have that excitement and hype and love for the game nowadays uh, because it's up against you know far greater competition than than what it was back then. Yeah. So. If you are interested in picking up Doom, and you're a big fan of Doom, then you might even be interested in picking up the Collector's Edition as well. Uh, this basically comes in the, the standard, obligatory steel case box that all Collector's Edition games come in, just so they can look out of place on your on your shelf. I think it's so they can survive the nuclear holocaust. Really. I think that's pretty much yeah, that's what it is. Because the first thing you're going to do after the holocaust is play video games. It's the most important thing. Yeah. As soon as the power's back up, of keep course. It, keep it safe. It also comes with a 12-inch statue of the Revenant, which is basically a scary-ass demon. Mm-hmm. I'll put a picture up, but it looks quite cool. I'm assuming we're not getting one to replace Batman. No, Batman... No, nothing beats Batman. No, I haven't really seen... I'm, I haven't really seen one yet. Matt's, I really Matt's a, scary enough, uh, a scary enough feature for the centre of the camera shot. We don't need... <laughs> <laughs> be better if I could actually get close to the uh, we'll move on to the other couple of releases we've got we've got Trackmania Turbo which is a game I'm really excited for Ooh, yes. and I think now Ash is on board yeah I am for sure. uh, this is coming March 22nd uh, I played the original game when it came out on PC circa 2004 2005 I can't remember exactly when I played it but it was a long time ago this is the first one coming to consoles other than a brief port we looked it up mm-hmm. the, the original went to the Wii at some point uh, but yeah it's if you've played Trial Fusions before think of that but with cars it's uh, a very fast racer yeah it's just a different type of racer yeah. altogether it's not yeah. your it's not your sort of drive clubs or your Forzas it's something completely different really yeah um, fast paced but I can um, I can see this getting hammered in terms of hours I will yeah, I'm really excited for it. I remember the ones back in the day where, you know, you could build custom courses for that. and it, I don't want to say ragdoll physics because that's not what it is, but, like, the cars, they had a very light yeah. feel to them, the way you could, like, throw them around corners. And when you had collisions, they did flip and kind of go everywhere in the air. And they were just really... It was a really fun game, and I'm excited to play this Yeah, 12 years later. <laughs> <laughs> it does look Open good. the PS4. It does look it does very, look very, very good, yes. So, yeah. And then... Rounding out the trio of new announcements for releases, we have Super Hot, uh, which was uh, originally a Kickstarter game, coming February 25th on PC, so only a couple of weeks there to wait. There should be a version coming to Xbox One shortly, don't know quite how soon yet. But this is quite an interesting first-person shooter, a few strategy elements, it seems to only time moves when the player moves and stuff like that. I don't know, Dan, this is kind of, we were talking just before about first-person shooters and how there's a lot of them. Do you like the, the twist that Super Hot is offering in terms of gameplay? It's a different concept because like, the way you saw it was in a multiplayer thing, it would be a case of everything moves if one person moves. That's so. my understanding because how, otherwise how would it work? Like, yeah. If one's moving and the other person isn't, then that, that doesn't work. So yeah. yeah, so it's like a case of as long as... But then if one person's moving all the time, then the mechanic of being able to stop time doesn't exist. It's one of those things where yeah, it's like... Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, I haven't it's watched... It's like a case of will the mechanic even actually be seen because most people are now... Maybe it's... I would imagine more realistically is you can only be killed if you're moving. Ah, uh, okay. That would make more sense. Yeah. Wouldn't it? So like if you're... You can, you can only kill people when they're on the move. Kind of like the... But then again... If that's the case, then surely you'd just start the match and then just walk away. What do you walk? How would you walk away? No, you, you, you would physically walk away from the console. Yeah, but then you can't win because you, you can't kill anyone. Yeah, but you can't lose either. <laughs> there's no fun in that, I guess. But, but yeah, there's... <laughs> there like, no, but it... I, it, 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 I know, you I know have, what you're if saying. You, if you have that, it makes it an unwinnable game. Yeah. Well, no, because you'd have more than... 
What? Just be the criminal? No. Just... Anyway. Why would, you, why would you play a game and then walk away from the game? The because point people game. troll other people, Matt. People don't troll yeah. people. People are nice, good, <laughs> honest gamers. And if they move, then the chances are it's going to be more than two players. It's like an arena shooter. So there'll be someone moving. Yeah, but if you have a last person standing game mode, but you can't kill someone if they're not moving, and that person decides not to move, yeah. Yeah, yes. it, it locks the game, is all I'm saying. Time moves only when you move. With its mesmerising gameplay and unique stylized graphics, Superhot aims to finally add something new and disruptive to the FPS genre. See the bullets trawling towards you as you carefully plan your steps and aim your gun. Enjoy the mayhem that is unleashed as you put that play into motion. Dodge bullets, take out your enemies, one step at a time. Anyway. Hmm. I feel we've got a little bit off track of the point of this. But it looks like a fun <laughs> twist to first-person shooters. It's yeah. the point that I was trying to get across. Um, limited ammo, so you have to be careful about when you shoot. And yeah. Every step matters, because obviously, for every time you move, the, bullet will the move bullet's coming the closer path. towards yeah. you. Yeah. So, yeah, it sounds interesting. It's it's sort of a puzzle as well. It's got yeah. it's sort of that puzzle strategy element, isn't it? So. Yeah. so, yeah, that's one to look out for for you PC gamers, and hopefully it'll come to Xbox soon. As it matters, you know, Dan poking all these holes in the game, he's not going to be playing it anyway, because it's... Unless he buys an Xbox one. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and rounding out the news this week, we said we'd talk about Nintendo, so there's a roundup of mm. plenty of information coming out from this week. We've got best-selling Wii U games, Amiibo stuff, and all that. So, kicking off with the top 10 games, this is... Worldwide sales, including in bundles, up to the 31st of December 2015. Mm -hmm. Probably most of the top 10 will be surprised, no surprise to anyone. Number one was Mario Kart 8. Not really a shock there. (laughs) Number two... I can imagine there's a few Mario games in here. Yeah. (laughs) Number two, New Super Mario Bros. Number three, Nintendo Land. Number three, Super Mario 3D World. Number four is... No... Number four is Super Mario 3D World. Number five is Super Smash Brothers. Six, Splatoon. Seven, Super Mario Maker. Eight, New Super Luigi. Uh, then Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker. And then rounding out the top ten is Mario Party 10. So there we go. Even the top selling game, Mario Kart, had only sold, I believe it was just over seven million units. So when you think, think that's yeah. the whole life of a console... And it's only sold 7 million. Mm. But, to put it into perspective, they've only sold 12 million Wii U's. That's nuts, isn't it? So, more than 50% of Wii U owners own Mario Kart. Which is incredibly impressive. It makes me ask, what the hell are the other 5 million playing? Because why would you not own Mario Kart? The other Mario. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Any real, no real surprises there, is there? I no. Don't think. No, there isn't. There isn't. I think um, it would be nice. I do have to ask, what the hell is Nintendo Land? Uh, is that yeah. the build? No. Uh-huh. I I know what I, 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 know, list. I didn't do no, research. I, I know what all the others are, but right. I've never heard of Nintendo. Land. We we have always been hopeless at knowing too much about Nintendo games. So uh, we're proving it right here. I am going to buy a Wii U. No, you're not. I am. No, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. No, you're not. Why would you bother? Why would you bother? And X is coming out this year. Yeah, I know, but... You're also never going to play on it. You already have too much. Basically, your knowledge of having... Your knowledge of okay. Nintendo games I'll nominate... will be, I have a console and I have I'll them on my shelf. I'll nominate Matt to buy Wii U. There you go. It's like, a, it's like Mario Party, but with Miis and MIDI stuff, basically. Okay. It's a party game. Okay, that's fair. That's all okay. I want. I've never heard of that one, so... So, there we go. Uh, no real surprises... I just thought it was interesting to see that more than fifth, you know, that Mario Kart Eight has such a high attachment rate. Yeah, and what we're talking of a lot of them bought is a bundle though. There were bundles, yeah. Yeah, there were it's good to see Splatoon yeah. getting up there considering that hasn't a lot of these games have been out for a while, but Splatoon is quite a new release. So. It was high, and yeah, Super Mario Maker as it well. Was, yeah. It was well marketed. I mean, Nintendo's marketing is a lot better now. I mean, you only got to stick on Nickelodeon or something. And I remember when Splatoon was coming out, it was on every. Five seconds on an advert. Yeah, so. during, during, during Ash's, you know, early morning watching Nickelodeon before. Right? <laughs> so when you say that you put uh, Bloomberg on in the morning, <laughs> so you can catch up on the markets, you're bullshit, and you're watching Nick Tunes. He's, he's watching, just sat there in his yeah. onesie eating his cereal. <laughs> I watch it Lazy Town. 
cartoons or whatever. <laughs> if we're going to talk about high attach rates, we also have to mention the Amiibos. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo have announced that more than 20 million Amiibos have been sold. That's not... That's sold through as well. I think yeah. it's 30 million have been shipped to retailers. Okay. Mm. Uh, again, compared to the 12 million consoles, that means that nearly every single console owner has at least two Amiibos. It's crazy. Which, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but not everyone will have yeah, those bearing in mind the number of people who won't actually have jumped on it at all yeah mm. they've bought it and, you know it's bought as a Christmas present and no one actually ever wanted it and it's just collecting dust in the corner yeah. <laughs> if anyone has one of those I'll, ta- I'll happily take it off your hands especially if it's one of the rare ones that's no longer being made yeah. so yeah the top selling we won't go f- through all of the Amiibos but the top selling one was Classic Mario which is no real surprise mm. and then there's a lot of other uh, there's a few Super Smash Brothers on there, Chris Mario, Pikachu, yeah. and a lot of three Splatoon characters in the top ten as well yeah. for Amiibo sales, the Inkling Squid, the Inkling Boy, and the Inkling Girl. Um, so yeah, no, no huge surprises on the Amiibos, but I just thought it was interesting that Nintendo have got a lot of things wrong over the last few years, but Amiibos is something that they've definitely got right. They have, and I think hopefully with the introduction of the new console, um, you know, we've said before it would be great to see Nintendo get back in, get back in the action and in the forefront, and certainly break more. I think into uh, the sort of Western world and Europe, and you know, I, I just think it, it's it would be nice and good for everybody. It'd be interesting to see like whether the momentum of those keeps up though because they've like shifted to making them as cards rather than figures for some of them haven't they some of them are cards but most of them are figures like there, there's been some things that have released like you said that work like player cards but I think the they know that people are buying the figures even as just collectibles yeah. like I, every now and then I look at them and go they're actually pretty cool I think they would look quite good next to my mm-hmm. Funko Pops it's like, it's like I'm not going to buy them I don't even have a Wii U but I'm eventually going to buy some yeah we're going to get a shelf up on the top and we can start putting them up there I would like some they would be yeah. cool and then closing out Nintendo just to something very quickly there was a passing comment uh, from the CEO about their upcoming mobile game we've already talked about that Moto, that crappy uh, little yeah. Nintendo Mii it was like what the hell is this you're going to mobile gaming and you're bringing Mii's into it like no one cares about them but the next one after that apparently will feature a well known Nintendo character oh 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 will it be Mario or Zelda or Metroid it has to be one of those. It'll be Mario. Or so maybe, that'll maybe be... they'll just throw Luigi to the wolves in terms of mobile game. <laughs> so that way he doesn't tarnish the good name of Mario if it goes wrong. Hopefully that it will be a proper game though rather than like when they released a Pokemon game on mobile. Not Pokemon Go, but a Pokemon game is effectively just like Candy Crush but with Pokemon branding all over it. <laughs> uh, yes. I want it to be a proper Mario game. You've been told. Thank you, Nintendo. <laughs> we can move into the video game releases for this week now. Nothing huge. This is uh, we're starting February. After this week, we've got lots of good games coming thick and fast. Yeah, I think we uh, start see some traction from next week on. This week, we? there's a couple of okay games, but we'll go through them fairly quickly here. We've got Cobalt on the Xbox One and PC. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's being published by Moyang, makers of Minecraft. Before anyone gets too excited, there's nothing like Minecraft. Yeah. It's uh, a 2D side scrolling kind of action platformer, but also like a multiplayer. There's multiplayer elements. It looks like you can kind of play almost not like Pong. Well, the foundations of Pong, effectively, when you're trying to score in the opposition's goals and stuff. So there are some fun multiplayer elements in there. It looks okay, but do either of you have any interest in it at all? No. No. Me neither. It's like, eh, okay, fine. And then, like, I might be... We don't know necessarily as much as everyone does in the industry. Well, definitely don't. But <laughs> we, we're we quite... Or at least I like to, You can answer the question as well. But I think I'm quite on the pulse with things that are being announced and that are on the go, generally. Yeah, and I would say so. We haven't really heard much about this game. Like, you'd think with the power of Moyang, they could market... The fuck out of this if they wanted to well you think the money that they've now got at their disposal yeah you know, Microsoft owned as well yeah but uh, there's been no real marketing for this game no. and when a game is released quietly that te- often tells you everything you need to know about a game yeah I think um, you know, if it's an indie game with no budget you can understand lack of marketing because it's expensive yeah. yeah but 
Maybe really they just don't want to distract people from Minecraft. Well, it is like constantly in like the top best-selling games of the month all the time. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like no, don't, 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 don't look at this. Don't look at this. Minecraft. <laughs> it, yeah, it does. It like. does confuse me though that my, Minecraft is always one of the best-selling games of the month. It's like who when, the hell is still buying it? It's like, when, <laughs> when is the market going to sat, like be saturated? Yeah. It's, like, does everyone own Minecraft now? Like, you must own a version of Minecraft. I've got three versions: Vita, PS3, PS4. Yeah. You must say the version. I've got PC version. Oh, yeah. and on my iPad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, even versions. I own a version of it. The Pocket Edition. It's crazy. I know. I don't even want to play it. We've got Not A Hero on PS4, uh, which is a fun, entertaining, side-scrolling shooter, yeah. for, for a much of a better word. It's, there's quite a bit of violence in there. You see from the trailer. It went on a bit long, but it is humorous, and it's not taking itself too seriously. Yeah. Uh, it's... Obviously, the, the title is maybe indicative of the type of individuals you're taking control of. They don't want to be a hero or save the day. They just want to... Shoot. Shoot and it's kill. A, it's like 16-bit or whatever. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with the really kind of dramatic, but yeah, humorous so, voiceover. I remember, yeah. With Jesus. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Jesus. Jesus. We then mm-hmm. have Amazing Discoveries in Outer Space, which... It's a good-looking game. Good-looking game. Yeah quite interesting it kind of merges space exploration with a bit of physics platforming and kind of physics based motions it looks quite interesting don't quite know exactly what the kind of gameplay loop Mm. on it is yet but it definitely looks like something different that we have it's intriguing it makes you sort of want to maybe learn a bit more about the game I would say I mean from my point of view I looked at it, I was intrigued, and I thought I'd like to, you know, see where this game goes and exactly what you're going to get out of the game. They have fun hats, so that's always a good start. Apparently so, yeah, apparently so. We then have Gravity Rush Remastered on the PS4. Uh, This game's been out for a while on Vita, finally making its PS4 prints. Mm. Uh, It is about a, a young girl who is able to manipulate gravity and must use her powers for good in order to save a floating city. But first she has to remember who she is because she has no idea what's going on. So always use your powers for good in these games. Yeah, well... You've got it's, to be... it's like the, the game is pretty much never... You get corrupted in the first five minutes and then just go on a rampage. <laughs> there, there is actually... That's a good point. You, you must use your powers to dominate the world. That never happens. There's, never, <laughs> there's not normally games anymore where you just play the bad guy mm. anymore. There's a game on PC... I don't know if you remember, it's called Postal. Do you remember Postal? And it was renowned for being really violent. And it's basically like a postal worker who just got pissed off, so he went on like a massive murder rampage in his town. Like he would set people on fire and then like piss on their corpses. I think there's a reason. I'm trying to work out whether the the phrase going postal comes from the game or comes from real life because a postal worker did something (laughs) and the game was based off that. I don't know. It would be very bad PR, I think, to, uh, to have a game of that. Especially when you now have, you know, I know we had the thing like Manhunt as well from obviously Rockstar, yeah. where you're an escape convict. Okay. The fact is, we've got so many people out there saying that video games lead to violence. You don't want to give people a game that can yeah. just give them extra unnecessary ammunition. Violent, right. Violence for the good, and I think, um, you know, killing bad people is generally perceived... As, fine. as as, as well, <laughs> yeah. acceptable, should we say, in the gaming world? Yeah. I think going out there and causing a rampage and you know I don't know shooting a I don't know. Well, I suppose we have, GTA is probably the best example of games we have now where you don't play. There are worse guys, but there's no two way about it. You never play a good guy. Yeah. No. You're a good guy in the criminal world. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if there is such a thing. Yeah. Well. But these, like most games, they have like the e- good evil choice comes up at some point <coughs> near the end, kind of thing. It's like, yeah, you'll, do, like, your, your final like, branch. Well, that's what I like Infamous. Actually, I mean, Infamous had that aspect, and I think that was quite nice. But, no, but they never make you both. make the choice early on or something like that. It's always like use your powers for good. <laughs> yeah, and then like it gets, it's like a gradual thing. Yeah. So, talking of murdering and whatnot, <laughs> as you do. Talking we've got it. about we've got a game called Agatha Christie the ABC Murders which probably doesn't really need any explanation you said you knew what it was going to be just from the title obviously yeah. Agatha Kish- Christie is a, a very quite, quite famous name in the Poirot. world of huh? Poirot yes. Hercule Poirot you, are you having a stroke? 
That's the name of the defective. So yeah, anyway, basically this is a, defe- uh, a defective game. A defective game. A defective yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> it's a detective game. Uh, there's a murderer going around mocking you, killing people, and you have to track him down. Yeah. It's so cool. So if you like those sort of murder mysteries, this could be the one for you. Uh, we then have Crypt, the Necro Dancer, which is a rhythm-based dungeon crawler, I think that's yes. what it was, not it? Yeah. That's, that would make that sense. Was, that was what it was described as. Yeah. 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 And uh, the name pretty much surmises it quite well. Dance with the Dead. Mm-hmm. I don't... Move on to another level. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. I do like rhythm games, and I like... But there seems to be... We had another game fairly recently where there was like a... A beat em up game, and you had to beat people up into, into time with oh, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, yeah. it was like a face off in a dance club kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I, maybe they're good games, I haven't played them, but it just seems a bit weird. It's a weird hybrid to have. It is a weird hybrid to have, but I think. Maybe it adds to that kind of. You know, it just shows that it's not meant to be a serious game, maybe, by yeah. having dancing while you're killing and beating people up. I, I mean, I enjoy them. Um, so yeah yeah they are they are pretty good but then Matt you don't have great rhythm so I have terrible rhythm yeah <laughs> uh, we don't have Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth which apparently is supposed to be a pretty good game it's being well reviewed at the moment uh, but it is a Pokemon wannabe so I don't really care <laughs> Does anyone, anyone, anyone here like Digimon you know you like Pokemon I don't even like Pokemon so I'm not going to like this am I you know where you're going to like their rip off uh, Dan, were you ever a Digimon fan? Or were you I grew just... up watching it, but then again, I same as I grew up watching Pokemon. I grew yeah. up watching just a chunk of anime stuff when yeah. I was younger, and it's all very close to the same thing. Gonna be gonna be picking up Digimon then? No. <laughs> okay. We then have Fortified on the Xbox One. Uh, this one was the Alien Invasion game, wasn't it? It was half yeah. Yeah. shooter, half tower, tower defense. defense. Yeah. 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 What do you think of this one then, Dan? This one more up your street. Like the aliens invading. It looked good. In the I like horse shooting. Yeah, it's like I don't yeah. really know what words to describe, but it looked fine. It's like it'll be fun. It's a co-op game. It's the sort of game that yeah, you can easily pick up. You don't need to take it too seriously. You can just have a run around, do a bit of horse shooting as you do, yeah. and yeah, it's <coughs> it, it looks fun. I don't know how long it would last. Yeah, no, that's that's that, the downside. That you're absolutely right. I think it's something you could pick up, play for a bit, and then be like, yeah, I'm kind of bored of this now. Yeah, the art style reminded me a lot of uh, Destroyer Humans. Look for Fortified coming to Games of Gold very soon. Mm. Although probably not, because Xbox, they don't seem to be as good with releasing these yeah, newer games. Yeah. It even launches as a Games with, for Gold game. I was going to say, it's the wrong end of the month. Yeah. yeah, it even launches as a Games for Gold, or it basically doesn't come for another like two or three years. Yeah. And then the final game of the week, also on Xbox One, is Bike Mayhem 2, which... Originates from those mobile games where you have a BMXer going from one side of the screen to the other, trying to manip- make all the jumps and yeah. get to the end, I assume, with as much efficiency as possible, tricks, quick, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah. Trials Fusion, but on BMXs. It, it basically is, yeah. It's very, Ollie, very right. similar to Trials. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, if you like those types of games, it's one for you. It, it actually does look actually... All right, it, yeah, to be it fair. does. It does. Yeah, um, um, probably not one I will pick up personally because I already have trials if I want to play that type of game. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, the game looks uh, the game's there good. There is a BMX in trials as well. There is. Yeah, yeah there is. <laughs> no, it's it's definitely a game. I think I would I'd happily pick it up. I think if it was a, a free game, I'd definitely play it. But um, not a game I'm going to go out of my way and purchase. So there's enough games. Yeah. So picks. Of the week, I'm going to go to Dan first. I think this is actually going to be the first week ever that I'm going to be passing on everything. No, you have to pick your week. That's, no, the, that's no. the title of the show. The show no, is cool. You, you have said week. before, if you don't like anything, you don't have to pick. And nothing there actually intrigues me enough that I would even you have to play it. But if, if gun to your head. If they were all free. If they were all free, which one would you play? You don't have to pay for it. It's just the game of the week show. You need to pick a game of the week. I know I've probably said that before, but I was quite drunk. I'll go for the amazing hats then. Yeah, yeah. discoveries in outer space. But <laughs> honestly, like there's nothing there. No, that's, that's that fair. I, it, it's like, not a strong week this week necessarily. Yeah. Ash, 
I do like the look of Bike uh, Mayhem too. I think it would be uh, a good fun game if you've not got um, you know this this sort of game. Um, then it's definitely one you probably want to add to your collection. Um, there's an aspect of being able to build your own track in there. There's probably the sort of online against friends uh, leaderboard sort of style, which is always good fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that. Although say that you know, amazing discoveries in our space does look very. I am intrigued by it, but uh, I think you get a lot more enjoyment out of uh, Bike Mayhem too. Fair enough. I'm going to go with Not a Hero on the PS4. I think it looks like a a fun side scroller shooter. Nothing. I like games that don't take themselves too seriously. Mm. Um, so yeah, it looks looks like a fun game. I've I've heard about this game before, and normally when you hear about games, it's probably because they're actually all right. Um, so I'm going to go on that basis and say that it must be a pretty decent game because it's already been on PC for well not forever but for a while. So yeah, that's Fair my enough. pick this week. And it's a pretty good description of you. So not a hero. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. <laughs> I've got nothing. It's been a long week. <laughs> uh, so that's it for this week on the Game Week Show. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Uh, don't forget to leave us a comment down below uh, about you, what you think of the, the new LEGO game coming out, so if you're excited and if you're going to be killing everyone in sight in the culling, uh, Trackmania Turbo, all of those good games that are coming very soon, which one are you going to be picking up? Uh, but for now, Dan, Ash. Cheers, guys. Thank Thanks you, as always. And everyone out there, thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.